Hello everyone. How are you? It is Lakidra again. And I would like to honor the fathers that are on here listening. I pray that your day on Father's Day was a day filled with happiness. That the Lord bless you with a happy Father's Day. In the name of Jesus. And whatever you have lost, that the Lord restored. That your latter days be greater than your former. In the name of Jesus, I pray that day was a joy. A day of joy to you in the name of Jesus. Bless you, men of God. And I pray that you are being encouraged and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. For the Lord tells us in his word to let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid for he has given us the Holy Spirit, people of God, to be with us in times of need and trouble. He said, I will be with you. Through the fires and through the floods. I will be with you as you go through the waters. And so whatever you are facing right now. Precious standards. Those of you that are hurting right now. Or maybe believe in God. For a wayward spouse. Or you standing in a gap. Believe in God for the restoration of your marriage. And you're believing for your family to be healed. The Lord is saying unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. For the Lord God wants us to rest in the peace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit who will be with us to the end. And so whatever you are facing right now, precious standards, think upon the Lord. Turn and have that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to get into for so many right now that are hurting. The Holy Spirit is the one to bring the comfort. Of love and peace. And fulfill every need. Every desire. Heal every heartbreak. For he is the one who raised Christ from the dead. And the same one who will be with you. And lift up your head. And bring strength and life. And hope and joy and peace. That passes all understanding. And that's what we're going to get into. And so I want us to look here in Ezekiel. Chapter 37 of how the Lord used the prophet Ezekiel, who he had to speak to the dead, dry bones. But there was something he showed him concerning the Holy Spirit, how he brings life, how he brings hope. You know, the people of Israel, they were saying that all hope was gone. They saw themselves as dry bones. They saw themselves as dead. And that may be what so many are right now because of what has happened in your marriage. And so many has been abandoned and so many has been rejected. And your marriage has fallen apart and your spouse has, has gone out into the world. And so many are just going through a heartbreak, a heartache. And you're feeling hopeless. You're saying my life is over. But as long as you have the Holy Spirit in your life, there is always life. There is always joy. There will always be peace. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. And so I want us to look here and I pray that this word bring encouragement. I pray that this word would enlighten you and give you hope. And bring back the joy in your life. And help you to have reasons for wanting to rise up early in the morning and give praise and thanks and face your tomorrow and stand strong in the power of God's holy might as he bring to you strength in your inner man. You know, this world will break us down, people of God. This is why the Lord says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you as orphans. I will send the Holy Spirit who will be with you and I will be with you. We will come and sup with you. The Father and I will come and be with you. We will dine with you. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And so people of God, there is hope. As long as the Holy Spirit is on your side. What can stand against you? Certainly not the Lord Jesus Christ who gave up his life for you. And surely is not the Father. Who sent his only begotten son. 
who didn't spare him, but gave him to pay the price for you and I. So won't he give you everything else? Doesn't he want you to be in health? Doesn't he want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers? The Lord wants you to have that joy so that you can walk in his strength and overcome this world as he has overcame it. So will you, people of God. And so I want us to turn here in Ezekiel chapter 37 and I want to read verses 11 through 14. This is what Ezekiel said. He says, then he said to me, talking about God Almighty, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home. To your own land. Then you will know that I. The Lord have spoken. And I have done what I said. Yes the Lord has spoken. And so here we see when the Holy Spirit. Comes on the scene in our life. My God. The Lord God begins. To bring. Deliverance. The Lord begins to bring. Restoration. He causes signs and wonders miracles happen the very will of God comes into play here we see God's promises were possible of what he had in store the very things God promised you know many right now you may be saying Lakeith I just don't see how God could ever turn this around it is the Holy Spirit that causes the will of God from his word to happen in our lives. The people of God here we see in Israel, they thought all hope was gone. They didn't think that they would ever see their land again. And many of you right now, you don't think you'll ever see that marriage restored again. You don't think you'll ever see that spouse again serving the Lord. Many of you are saying, I just don't see it. But the Lord is saying in his word, you will know that I am the Lord and that I have spoken it and that I have done what I said. Done what? Caused a man to love his wife as Christ loves the church and caused the woman to honor and respect her own husband and caused you to become one flesh. Many just don't know. You're so caught up into what you're seeing. But, you know, this is where the, the people of Israel were. They were looking at what had happened. It, it, it looked impossible for them to ever return back to their land. And yet we see now they're back into their land. We, we are witnessing Ezekiel's prophecy coming to pass. God had them to speak his word. And said, even though they are speaking a different word. Even though they are speaking against their own lives. Even though they are having doubt. You, man of God, speak over their lives. My spirit, my spirit is going to cause it all to come to pass. He is the one that causes the word to come to life, people of God. And so we cannot doubt his word. For nothing is too hard for God. So when you look at the word of God, just know that it is the Holy Spirit bringing it to pass. God spoke it and the Holy Spirit manifests it. Praise the Lord. So how can it be impossible? For with God all things are possible. Have that expectation. Begin to praise God and thank him and meditate on his word for what is coming your way. Expect the Holy Spirit to breathe on the word of God. Start declaring it over your life. Start rejoicing in what's coming your way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
And so Ezekiel knew what was coming. Ezekiel had heard from the Lord. And this is what the Lord is saying to you and I. Hear his voice. Hear his word. Expect the Holy Spirit to bring it to pass. Because Jesus paid the price. It is his grace. And it is the love of the Father. You can have that expectation right now in your life. And that peace that passes all understanding. While you wait for the promises to be fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. They couldn't see what was coming. And so many right now you're looking at what is happening in your life in the natural. But you're, you're not focusing and fixing your thoughts. On the one who is your peace, your love, and your joy, your comfort. And that is the Holy Spirit. Many are saying the same things. All hope is gone. My life is over. I have come to the end. There is no hope for me. How can I come out of this? I don't see that I will ever be able to come out of this. It is over for me, Lakitra. There has been a divorce. I have not seen my husband. My husband has gone on or my wife has gone on. Many of our men today are seeing how their spouse, their wives may have gone on. But the Lord is saying unto you and to you women of God who are feeling broken right now, turn to the Holy Spirit. Have comfort. In his presence. There is deliverance for you. There is hope for you. There is joy. My God the Holy Spirit helps us. Overcome the things of this world. He helps us get over. The desires that we are having. And the cravings we are having. And he begins to fulfill. Those cravings. And he begins to heal. And, and close up that emptiness. And that void. And remove that hopelessness. And he begins to change your language. And cause you to declare. The goodness of the Lord over your life. When the Holy Spirit is in our hearts. He causes us. To declare and decree the goodness of the Lord. Even though we're not able to see it. He helps us to walk by faith and not by sight. You know men will be wondering why are you so joyful. In times of trouble. Don't you realize the divorce that has happened? Or don't you realize your home is broken? And, or, or don't you realize your family has been torn apart? But when you have the Holy Spirit, I tell you, it is more than enough. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You know, I've shared this with you, precious standards. In my last teaching, I cannot stress it enough. That the moment we take our eyes off of our situations and focus our thoughts on the Holy Spirit and reach out to him, have that fellowship with him. Tap into his love, his joy, his peace, his power that is greater, that is greater than any pain, that is greater than anything the enemy could ever come up against you with. That is greater than the hurt that has come from your spouse who is bound right now. That joy, I tell you, it will keep you occupied all the way up until the coming of the Lord. It will keep you and help you endure to the end. This is what the Lord wants us all to discover. This resurrection power, this same power that raised Christ from the dead is able to quicken you and your inner man. Bring in life and peace. The Lord was telling this to Ezekiel, tell the people. Speak a word over them. Prophesy over them of what's coming. They will know that I am the Lord. I'm going to change their language. They are speaking defeat right now. But there is coming joy. Weeping only endures for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. The Holy Spirit is the joy of our salvation. You know, this is what David said. Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Where there can't be any joy without the spirit of the Lord. In times of trouble. Jesus says this joy I give unto you. This peace. The world cannot give you. This is why Paul tells us. In 2 Corinthians. Let us go back to the scripture. In the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. He tells us in verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Notice what he said about the fellowship. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. He said the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Why? Because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ saved us. It delivered us. And the love of the Father surrounds us, strengthens us. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit comforts us, keeps us, sustains us, walks with us. The one who is with us, the one who is our peace in the midst of the storms, the one who is in us, walking with us through the fires and the waters and the floods, the one who will be with you. Many that may be facing divorce right now, the Holy Spirit will be with you in the courtroom, giving you that peace and that joy. And that faith that all is well. And that God is able to turn around this situation. Regardless of what it looks like. Regardless of what the judge has said. Therefore what God has joined together can no man separate. He will cause that anxiety to leave and bring forth peace. This is why Paul says fellowship with him. Look to him. Turn to him. This is why Jesus said receive the comforter. The Lord says, let us not let our hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He's telling us, I'm giving you this peace. There won't be any heaviness, for he will give us the spirit of praise for our heaviness, our heavy hearts. There will be joy. There will be goodness. There will be love. We can endure all things. We will be able to endure hardship like a good soldier. We have the Holy Spirit in our life. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, he lifts up a standard against him. He helps us stand strong and walk in the power of God's might. You know, men are trying to do it in their own strength. You're trying to stand in your own strength. Many are reaching and running after their spouse don't run after your spouse run to the holy spirit leave your spouse in the hands of the lord you find your strength and your joy you can stand boldly and in the confidence knowing that everything is going to be all right my god we don't have to allow our hearts being troubled and our minds being confused and our joy stripped from us. We don't have to allow the enemy to come in and steal our peace from us. That peace will be with us as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit and look to him. Cast our cares upon the Lord, meaning let go of these things that we are running so hard behind striving so hard for let us strive for the fellowship of the holy spirit let us turn to him as the lord god tells us in john chapter 14 he tells us in verse 17 he says he is the holy spirit who leads into all truth the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. Let this not be you and I people of God. Let us not be like the world. Who is not looking for the Holy Spirit. They are handling things on their own. And they are wondering why they are so weary and broken. They are wondering why things are falling apart. In their own minds. And in their souls. In their inner man. They are wondering why. They are turning to alcohol and drugs and needing people and needing, craving for the things of this world to have joy and peace. But it don't last. When trouble comes, what are they going to do? There are things money cannot buy. Sex cannot do it either. People can't do it. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us the world isn't looking for him. Let us look to him. To have that fellowship with him. 
that joy will come back, that hope will come back by turning to the Holy Spirit. You'll be testifying about the goodness of the Lord even while you're facing the troubles because he is the spirit of faith. He says the world isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. He says, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. This is what he told to the disciples. He was uh, allowing them to hear what was coming their way. This joy that was coming their way. This one who would be with them, the Holy Spirit, when there is sorrow, when there is an attack, when there is persecution, when there is rejection, he was allowing them to hear how the Holy Spirit will be with them. He will be their peace in the midst of troubles. He was allowing them to know that heaven is going to be with them right here on earth. He says, he says, no, I will not abandon you. You as orphans. He says, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. And down in verse 26 and 27. I love what he says here. He says, but when the father sends the advocate, meaning the Holy Spirit, as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Meaning he will keep your mind stayed up on me. And whose mind is stayed up on thee, thou shalt keep them in perfect peace whose trust is in God. Only the Holy Spirit can help us keep our mind up on him. Only the Holy Spirit can cause our minds to be covered with the helmet of salvation. The word of God. And keep us armed and clothed in his promises. God in our hearts and our minds. Helping us to quench out every fiery dart of the enemy. Helping us to stand against every lie and deception. Helping us to stand against the troubles that is going on in our minds and in our lives. He'll help you declare the word of God by reminding you of all Jesus has said unto you in his word. The Holy Spirit is the one to feed us the word of God and help that word take root in our hearts where we can walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord. He says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. You see, he was letting the disciples know and he's letting us know, people of God, we who are in Christ Jesus. I am giving you a gift. And he is the Holy Spirit. There will be peace in your life. You don't have to let your hearts be troubled. I am giving you peace that the world cannot give. Going after the things of this world won't bring peace. It's the Spirit of the Lord. The one the Father will send who will be as I am. The one who will be with you. The one who will help you. So the Holy Spirit is him in us. Which is a better help. This is why he said it is best that I go away. Otherwise the Holy Spirit won't come who will be in you. He's with you now. But then he shall be in you. He will help your minds. He will help you in your emotions. He will give you power. You will share in my glory. You will be as I am in this earth. There will be power in your lives. Fear will be gone. You won't be afraid of no man, no one. No sin will have dominion and power over you. He's the one to help you stand strong. Stand strong against the wiles of the devil. He will help you stand strong against fear. And he will help you remember. What I've promised you. He'll keep that word rooted and grounded in your heart. He will teach you all things. Cause you to be wiser than the devil. And discern. What thus says the Lord. Discern truth. 
and expose every lie. Help you to cast down all wicked imaginations and every high thing that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God. He'll help bring our minds under the obedience of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, precious standards. As the Lord God tells us, we are to look for him. Rely upon him. Lean not to our own our own understanding, but acknowledge him in all that we do. He will lead in God. And direct our path. And when that wayward spouse see you. He'll see peace. He'll see peace. Even when they want to walk away. Let them go. Some may want to walk away. Let them go. The Holy Spirit will help you have peace with that spouse. He will help you release them over. And trust God. To handle the rest. He will help you. Occupy your time. On the things of God. And his promises. As the word of God tells us in John chapter 14 verse 1. Jesus says don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. And also trust in me. Praise the Lord precious standards. Trust in the Lord. Meaning trust in his word. Trust in God. Jesus is saying as you trust in God. Also trust in me. Remember he is the word. And as the word tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, a man shall leave father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be united into one flesh. It is an illustration, precious standards, of the way Christ and the church are one. And as the Holy Spirit dwells in you, there is coming life. This life, and you will have it more abundantly. And this anointing, this overflow will pour out in the life of your spouse. When they come in contact with you, they'll sense the presence of the Lord. Bondages will be broken. Yokes will be broken. There will be newness of life. Joy. When the Holy Spirit is in our life, he helps us to guard our tongues and watch what we say. We'll be gentle and kind with one another, which is attractive. Women of God to our husbands. It is attractive men of God to your wives. When they see the love of Christ Jesus. This is why we have to turn to the Holy Spirit. Otherwise there will be friction. There will be anger. There will be bitterness. There will be unforgiveness. There will be slander. There will be ungodly character. Sexual immorality. There won't be peace and joy. There will only be confusion. We will be lashing out at one another. And so this is why we want to pray for the Lord. To bring salvation to our loved ones. Bring salvation to our spouse. Fill them with his Holy Spirit. This is what makes us one and be like minded towards one another. Where we can reverence Christ Jesus. Where a husband can love his wife as Christ loves the church. And the wife can be submissive to her husband and everything. Out of reverence for Christ Jesus. For it is God who gives us his power to do the things that are pleasing unto him. And so we who are carnal minded. It leads to death and failure and defeat. But those... That are spiritual minded. It leads to life. And fruitfulness. And prosperity. And peace. And it breaks. The power of the devil. Off of our lives. Continue declaring the word of God. For the Holy Spirit gives us the strength. To speak the things that God. Has spoken and declared. Over our lives. From his word. Bondages will be broken. Remember, deliverance starts within us. Deliverance starts within us. And so let us surrender to the Holy Spirit. There will be peace. Don't let your hearts be troubled, precious standards. Many right now, even on today, or on tonight, or this morning, wherever you are, you're letting your hearts be troubled. When you don't turn to the Spirit of the Lord. 
You're going to find that your mind is bombarded with all trouble, fear, what your spouse may have said, what they are doing, instead of having that fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the one who will help you occupy your time in the things of the Lord, where you have hope and see that there is a future ahead of you, that God is bringing restoration back. Your language will change because of that joy in your heart. There will be strength from up on high in your inner man. I'm telling you, people of God, there are coming more and more testimonies as you begin to fix your mind upon the things of God. Keep that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. God the Father will reward you for walking up rightly before him and in obedience unto him, letting him fix the situation as you trust in him. As Paul tells us, you never know, wife, that how you handle this. Not only will it bring your spouse back to you, but it'll bring them back to God. Same with you, man of God. Paul tells us this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 16, in the message, I love it. He said, you never know, husband, that the way you handle this will not only bring your wife back to you, but back to God. Why is he saying this? Because of the fruit they'll see. And because God will begin to use that anointing that is upon you to break yokes. And it will soften the hearts of your husband. It will soften the hearts of your wife. Man of God. It will bring deliverance to your husband, woman of God. God will begin to fight that battle. God will begin to remove the veils. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And faith and trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you that all is well. Thank you that there is deliverance. Thank you we have overcame this world. We bind the works of the devil. He is under our feet. Oh God thank you for your power and your glory. Thank you Lord. You are not the author of confusion. We cast out confusion right now. We thank you for peace. Being in our homes, our lives, our marriages. Thank you for salvation oh God. Thank you Lord God. You are going to use Lord God. The pain and the sorrow. To bring forth the joy. The peace. The comfort. Thank you Lord. Because we can turn to the Holy Spirit. Who will be with us and guide us into all truth. Who is our peace. The one who helps us overcome the things of this world. Thank you that there is life and unity and love and joy. Coming back in marriages and homes, oh God. And marriages will never be the same. They shall illustrate the way Christ and the church are one. Thank you that it is all by your spirit. The comforter. Life. Hallelujah. Life. Raising up dead marriages. As you raised up the dry bones. As you restored the people back into their land by your spirit. Thank you. You are restoring marriages and relationships. Making husbands and wives. Causing husbands and wives to be one. And like minded towards one another. In the name of Jesus. We praise you and thank you for it in advance. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We worship you and adore you. We praise you and thank you for your goodness. And your mercy oh God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank him, people of God. And worship the Lord. Rely upon him. Be in fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be blessed, people of God. Remember, God loves you. And I love you too. And until next time, remember you.